Johnson is standing by on the phone to talk about things far more important than liquor. Welcome to the program, Senator Johnson. Hey, how are you doing? I am, uh, I'm doing well. I know that it, should be, or it shouldn't be a good thing that I talk about booze this early. Um, but you know, I could give you reasons why it makes sense. No, no, no. Why do I want Ron Johnson on the program? Two reasons. I want to talk to you about something that you are doing that um, I don't really know if a lot of people know you're doing it. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to let you know that a liberal polling outfit, public policy polling, has put out a press release telling you, Senator Johnson, that you should do what Barack Obama wants you to do and enthusiastically support President Obama's Supreme Court nominee, whatever that person might believe, uh, simply because that's the only way this liberal polling outfit says you're going to be able to win re-election. I think it's really been amazing since the tragic death, and that really is a profound loss, uh, Justice Scalia. But through it to our country's Supreme Court, really how aggressive the press has been, you know, trying to get Republicans, including myself, to acknowledge the fact that, well, people spoke in 2012, and they, they elected President Obama, so he's got the right to put his, you know, super legislator, not a judge, he's super legislator on the court. And I always try to remind people, yes, but in 2014, the American people sent enough Republican senators to the Senate to give us the majority, and we are a co-equal branch in this process. The president nominates, we provide advice and consent, and of course our advice has been, in such a unique period of time, I mean, eight months before the election, that the American people decide the direction of the country, why not let them decide the direction of the court? There's no guarantee there, we're going to win the election, make sure the court uh, remains a conservative one. But let the American people decide, well, we're co-equal branch, you know, our, our, that's our advice, uh, you know, if, if President Obama nominates somebody, I think it's pretty certain we will withhold our consent. But, uh, you know, not acting is also acting and fulfilling our constitutional duty. You know, and, and you know who said it, not, not really as eloquently, um, but you know who also said that in 1992 was one then-Senator, now-Vice President Joe Biden, and said, look, you know, when you're in the, in the throes of an election cycle, this is no time to try to, you know, load the court. Of course, at the time, it was a Republican uh, he was worried about with regard to a nomination. Now, of course, you know, there's a Democrat in office, but Joe Biden said, you know, we're in the throes of an election cycle. This is no time to try to pack a court. Um, so I guess, you know, it only, it only works... Uh, when the Democrats are the ones saying it. But to your point, Senator, the Senate is a co-equal branch of government, despite what the media would like everybody to believe, despite what the president would like everybody to believe. And I, I think maybe despite what people have been taught in their K-12 public, uh, public school classrooms, you, the, the American people said, we want a different party in control of the United States Senate, and you're just simply offering your advice on this. Well, and you know, also, we understand our supporters actually want judges, people that actually respect and adhere to and have fidelity to the text of the Constitution and the law. They don't want super legislators. I know that's what liberals want. I know that's what President Obama wants. They're people that are interested in the result. Don't, don't worry about what the, the text of the Constitution says. Conservatives actually want judges. You know, people like Scalia, who, even though he was offended by the result of the flight burning case, had the Delhi Constitution said, no, the First Amendment right to free speech trumps his desire for the right outcome. Uh, so, no, I mean, we actually want judges, and, and again, it's a very reasonable uh, proposition. You know, the other thing that's interesting about the Vice President Biden's speech in 1992 is he's been making the same point I've been making. This is not a constitutional crisis. This isn't going to end the court. This isn't going to end the republic. We've had plenty of times where we've had vacancies on the Supreme Court. There were times when the Supreme Court was had a even split of six justices and ten justices. So the court will do fine. The, the, the cases that don't necessarily get decided may be decided by the lower court. That they can be held over for arguments once they have nine justices. I agree with Vice President Biden. This isn't that big a deal. No, that's the point he was trying to make in 92. Yeah, he was trying to make that point in 92. Uh, apparently, and, and apparently now he is dancing, I'm, I'm told, not so well in trying to uh, undo the point he was making in 1992. Look, this is just a liberal outfit that's trying to get the media to put a story together. And of course, that's what Feingold is, is relying on, is, is free media. He's relying on newspaper editorials. He's relying on stories that say, you know, this poll, even though it's a push poll, this poll by this liberal polling outfit says Senator Johnson should do what Barack Obama wants him to do without having to buy a radio commercial, without having to, you know, put a television commercial on the air. That's, that's essentially what this is about. You've got Russ Feingold, who has got a whole cadre of, of different independent groups out there that he decried so powerfully in the past, who are out there trying to push stories and push information out to make Russ Feingold's case, uh, and, and, and do so by not uh, actually having to spend a red cent doing it. By the way, are they pointing out that Senator Feingold voted to a filibuster Justice Alito's nomination? They curiously, they're not. Are they, are they, are they, they really been plastering that over the front page? Probably not. No, you know what else they haven't been plastering all over the front page anywhere is the fact that this guy, who, who will always run on some kind of platform of fiscal responsibility, the moment he got into office, voted for every increased spending measure and every tax increase that ever came before him. So, you're, you know, no, this is about the free media that, you know, that Team Feingold knows it's going to get. And in this particular case, I'm going to point this out because you're going to see this in newspapers. The left wing reporters are going to put this together and put it as, make it a story uh, that's, that this left wing polling outfit that did a push poll is telling Ron Johnson he should be like President Obama to get Republicans uh, and independents to vote for him in Wisconsin. President Obama, who right now has overseen you know, some of the most spectacular economic failures, constitutional failures. This is apparently what, what, the, uh, what the American people want you to do to get reelected in Wisconsin. Well, you know, again, I'm, I'm my own man. I, I have my own beliefs, my own principles. I, I will only vote confirm a judge, not a super legislator. And I must, let's face it, the Leader uh, Connell, the Judiciary Committee now has uh, issued a letter saying they're not going to hold a hearing because they believe we should let the American people decide you know, in their votes and let the next president nominate. So it's kind of a moot point. It's just not going to I'm not going to throw that process, but I think the Leader Connell and the Judiciary Committee have spoken. So let's move on. Let's talk about the serious uh, issues, the enormous challenges this nation faces. Yeah, one, one thing I, I, because I didn't expect this to happen before I had January, I also want to ask you about is President Obama's uh, announcement that he intends to close Guantanamo Bay and move terrorists into United States prisons in violation of the law. I just want to kind of get people uh, to understand what the president can and cannot do with regard to Guantanamo Bay. Well, the first time the Congress spoke on this, the first time the Senate spoke on this was under Democrat control, and they specifically voted 90 to 6 not to allow President Obama to transfer Guantanamo Bay prisoners to U.S. soil. 90 to 6. So I think Congress has made itself clear multiple times. If President Obama did that, he would be in clear violation of the law. All right, he'd be in clear violation of the law. Now the question is, would he do it anyway? But, he, but wait, I don't even think he could, uh, simply because would it not? Would his orders not put everybody who was executing the orders in clear violation of the law as well? Uh, I, again, I'm not a lawyer, but let's face it, that would be challenged almost immediately. And I would think most district court judges would look at the law if he signed, if he signed these laws and say, no, this president, uh, sorry, you can't do this." Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, because that's, that's sort of you know, as you look at this, you're thinking this is pure politics. In order for him to do to empty out Guantanamo Bay, he'd have to open the doors and let them all go. And, I, and I'm not sure that that is something that, that you know, Madam Hillary would like him to do in an election year. You know, it's such a crazy policy. I've been to Guantanamo. It's a first-class
I, I would like to uh, maybe close on, on a positive story, if you don't mind. Um, and, and quite frankly, when I read the article in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel about the Joseph Project, Senator, this is entirely you know, unrelated to foreign policy. Um, I, I'm reading through this article, and I'm several paragraphs, and I see your name. This is a story about um, a, a matching, a, a, you know, private attempt to match, difficult to match employees with jobs, targeting Milwaukee. And so I'm reading down through the article, and there's your name. And I thought, well, what does Ron Johnson have to do with the Joseph Project? I'm going to let you sort of help people understand, if you don't mind, what this is and how it's working and how it actually does provide a private solution to a problem, frankly, that, in the, that, that at the end of the day was, was created by government. Well, just because you became a senator doesn't mean I, keep, I, don't, I stop doing what I've always done, really involved in my community. And, you know, it's actually giving great capabilities. So that's how we're the state of You see all these opportunities, all these jobs that are being filled. And then you go to Milwaukee, you see all these individuals unemployed. And so we've been trying to figure out how can we make that connection between the people that are generally seeking opportunities, people who want to turn their lives around with us, former drug addicts or you know, former prisoners or just people who had a tough time. How can we connect them with those job opportunities? Well, we get a formula uh, using inner city churches. And we, you know, I dealt with the, the project, the Joseph Project, and really named it after Robert Woodson Sr.'s book, The Triumph of Joseph, which when I met Robert Woodson Sr., he gave me that book. I pass it around. I, I bought a lot of copies and I give it to people. It's really about oftentimes faith based organizations, often started by people that turn their own lives around, just saving people one person at a time. So, what we're doing is our set of staff uh, goes into, for example, Greater Praise Church for a week-long training session for the people that uh, Pastor Joel Smith has identified and, and by dozens, dozens of people at a time. We, we give them soft skills training, interviews training, and then we set them up with interviews to companies that are seeking you know, people that actually want to work. And it's working. It's, it's in its infancy, but the more than 30 people have already obtained jobs. We, you know, it's just down to Greater Praise on Monday morning. I kind of do the kickoff little speech talking about attitude and, and really telling those individuals it's so important that they succeed, and not only for themselves, but for the people that follow them in, in the next sessions. You know, we kind of make this program work. So I really encourage you to I appreciate the fact that Milwaukee Journal Sentinel highlighted. I appreciate you talking about it because we need more businesses, we need more industry churches or other organizations that can do that initial vetting process that bringing to our attention people that truly are seeking opportunity, that want to work, that want to contribute to an organization, and we'll help make, make the connection with those, those companies that are they're looking for good, good workers. So, you take, so, so you're providing, you're finding the, the companies that want to hire people. You're then working with the Milwaukee churches, and they're finding the candidates, right? They're, they're the pastors and the people who work at the church. They're the ones who are finding people, usually, I'm guessing, men. Um, and, and, and these are people with troubled pasts, as I'm, as I'm sort of led to understand in the journal. Or just, or just down the line. You know, it's, a, it's a wide range of people. You know, people who just you know, have a hard time getting a job. They've had tough lives. And so, but you know, they, they want to work. They want to contribute. They want to be able to earn their own success. They have the dignity of having a job. And we, we just make that connection and do some a one week training process. They kind of like a boot camp. And uh, you know, we've got an OTC. You know, we got a lot of veterans in my staff that want to do this. And uh, it's just working. It's, it's, it's really hard work, quite honestly. It is actually a, a surprisingly simple yet. Um, you know, uh, effective idea. You also provide transportation because some of these jobs are outside the, the, the Milwaukee, you know, uh, metro system range. So there's actually transportation for these guys. Um, is it, so this is brand new, though. Um, you're hoping to get what more churches, more more companies to sign up for this. Yeah, more organizations. You know, again, but by, by publicizing this, we just want more people involved, understanding that there are a lot of opportunities out there, and we'll help them. Again, we'll help them make that connection. We'll do that one week training process work, and hopefully, other people take up the same process. It's, we're just trying to find a process that works because there's a lot of people with property, there's a lot of opportunities out there, and this is one way to make that connection. Thanks for being on the program today, Senator Johnson. I appreciate it as always. Um, I'll link that article up again. Um, it's about a week old now. A lot of people might have skimmed past it uh, in the Journal Sentinel, so I'll link that up again so some more folks can learn about the Joseph Project. Good day on the program. Thanks very much. Have a great day.